Hey, folks, Inside Amy Schumer returns to Comedy Central this Tuesday, April 21st at 10.30 for Season 3. The awesomely funny Amy Schumer is back with more hilarious insights on sex, relationships, and life in general. Entertainment Weekly called Amy Comedy's funny, filthy, fearless new voice. Tilda Swinton just wrote a poem about her, and I like her, too. If you can't wait until tomorrow, the first two seasons of Inside Amy Schumer are now available on the Comedy Central app and cc.com. This episode is also sponsored by Zero. That's X E R O. Zero is beautiful accounting software built to help small businesses be more productive and successful. Zero is easy to use. Send invoices and online quotes to your customers, pay your employees, manage your cash flow and expenses, even your inventory with Zero. Zero is in the cloud so you can access and manage all of your business accounting on the go. Sign up for a free 30 day trial at zero.com slash pod. Podcasts. That's X E R O dot com slash podcasts. All right, let's do the show. Lock the gates. <laughs> All right, let's do this. How are you? What the fuckers? What the fuck buddies? What the fucking ears? What the fuck adelics? What the fucksters? How's it going? This is Mark Marin. This is WTF. I'm in a hotel room. I'm in my hotel room studio at the Westin at the Detroit airport. I don't think I'm ever going to get into the actual city of Detroit. I've been here three times in the past several years for one night gigs that just don't afford me the time to get in. This is Saturday. I'm recording this. It's Monday. You're hearing it. I'm here to do uh, the uh, Royal Oak Music Theater. Let's just say it went great. Why not? Let's just say it went great. I just need to get this done because I'm traveling. It's been great. By the way, Rose Byrne is on the show today. And also uh, we got a little uh, little chat with Kevin Pollack uh, about his new movie, uh, this documentary he made, Misery Loves Company. It's, it's out. It's available on VOD and iTunes. It's going to open in select theaters April 4th. Uh, I'm in it. Many comedians are in it. So, okay, this tour has been awesome, all right? I, there, like, I was in Madison the other night, and the, the interesting thing, I don't, I don't really want to toot my own horn, but the show's good, I'm entertaining, I'm in good spirits, I'm funny. But every once in a while, I'll just catch a pocket up on stage where things happen that just will never happen again. And, and Madison, you know, got that show. Now, I'm, I know there's more in me, because I'm pretty wide open, and if there's warmth and if there's a good sort of flow between me and the audience, I, you know, I want nothing more than to make something happen that's never happened before. It's, it's, it's the best. And right now I'm about, I'm about neck deep in that new uh, Richard Pryor biography by Scott Saul, uh, which is amazing. And you know, reading about Pryor and then having this opportunity to go out and do these long sets and sort of push the envelope and, you know, with, with, with Pryor in mind. Uh, you know, really sort of reading the anatomy or learning about the anatomy of of his process from very early on. Like, this is the first time I've ever done uh, a, a theater tour, you know, where we're doing places that seat around a thousand. Some places are bigger. I'm in Madison at the Barrymore Theater, sold the place out, and it was just one of those nights. I can't even account for why it happens, but I did almost two hours. Well, I, you know, before I got on, you know, the guy who runs the place was talking to me about people who've been through. He says, you know, Chris Hardwick was just here, and he said the same thing as you. He'd do like an hour, hour and 15. He ended up doing two hours. So I'm like, well, fuck. If Hardwick's going to do two, I'm going to have to do two. So th that wasn't the incentive. Maybe it was the incentive, but there's something about having a perfect sort of exchange of energy with an audience where I was just, I just went out there. I just pushed things further than I pushed them. I pulled things out of the air. There was improvisation that you, you know that surprised me, and uh, things happened that'll never happen again. And that that's been happening on most of these shows, almost all the shows. I was out. I was out in Pittsburgh, and that that place was a trip. The crowd was fucking great. And there's something about Pennsylvania, man. It's heavy, man. It's there's a in my mind there's a darkness to it. I don't know if that's true. I don't know, but it, it, it just, I feel a presence of something in Pennsylvania in general. Something I, I'll, I'll embrace, not something I, I, I feel negative about. But 
But there are plenty of dates coming up. Dallas is coming up, and we got um, Houston and Austin and Asheville and Charleston and uh, San Francisco and um, Seattle. Uh, I know Atlanta, you know, go to WTFpod.com slash calendar and, uh, you know, check out these dates if you want to, uh, if, if you want to, if you want to see the show, I've been hanging around after every show, you know, meeting, greeting with everybody who wants to selling a few posters and, uh, it's just been, uh, it's just been great. It's been, uh, it's, I, I'm thrilled to be doing comedy. I'm excited to get out there. I just, first time in my life I've ever really felt like this where the shit is in place and i'm not i'm not really second guessing myself and and people are having a good time so that's what's going on that's my little road diary not eating well had my first experience with red robin which i could have lived without i could have gone through my whole life without eating a fucking red robin hamburger but i did i ate it and i got on stage in pittsburgh last night with a belly full of red robin that was you know that was just just yelling at me from the inside screaming at me from the inside. But that added to it, there's nothing like the voices of self-hate in the form of a digesting Red Robin hamburger to make a performance really fucking sing. All right, well, look, we got a big show today. If you're into fantasy sports, it's a great time for you to check out DraftKings.com, America's favorite daily fantasy baseball sites where you can win huge cash prizes every day. Daily fantasy baseball means no season-long commitments. With DraftKings, you can just go day-to-day, play whenever you want, and if you win, get your cash right away. I'm not really a fantasy sports guy or even a real sports guy, really. Uh, Not at all, but I'm starting to get the hang of it. From what I understand, you just pick two pitchers and eight position players, and then if that team does well, you're on your way to uh, to straight-up cash, folks. And that's it. It's like a new season every time you play. DraftKings has already crowned over a dozen millionaires with hundreds of thousands winning other cash prizes. Now it's your turn, buddy. That's right. Go to DraftKings.com now and use the promo code WTF to play for free in the $100,000 Fantasy Baseball Contest. First place takes home $10,000. So use the promo code WTF for free entry now at DraftKings.com. Did I mention we have Rose Byrne on today? Did I mention that from uh, the the new movie, Adult Beginners, with uh, with Nick Kroll, who's been on my show a few times? It's his baby. I believe he produced it. But Rose Byrne from from Damages, you know her from. Uh, she's going to be in that new movie uh, Spy with Melissa McCarthy. She was in uh, Bridesmaid. She was in, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of movies. She's uh, from Australia. I'm going to talk to her too. All right, let's talk to Kevin Pollack back in the garage. <laughs> Relaxing is wildly overrated. I think. I think. I, I just wish I could do it. Is it overrated? Yeah, yeah. I I can detach from the mothership. Yeah. But I don't. At some point, I'd rather feel alive and in the thick of my life and just be more proactive about everything. Uh huh. And even if I have to be proactive about relaxing. Yeah. Fine. I'm yeah. St- there's I still a sense of I'm doing this right. Right. And I think that might be the driving factor. I'm doing this. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'm just I, I'm full of dread. It's an anxiety issue. And I, after watching the movie, your movie, <laughs> Misery Loves Comedy, there are certain people like that are in that movie. Everybody's in that movie that you know I really connect with. You know, when in, in Dana, you know, the, when Dana Gould's talking about mm-hmm. the anxiety and the panic and the. And uh, you know, I I deal with that. I know that's uh, one of the issues, but. Unlike him, like I still think that I need to get to the source and somehow, ma- you know, like reckon with the source. Like I, I'm going to go to uh, whatever the what's the journey to the, the to get. The, I want the ring. Yeah, that's inside of me. That, that I'm going to go into the pit yeah. and I'm going to find resolution with with that thing that's causing that with the well. I'm going to plug the anxiety well. And how long on my you, own? How long do you think you could last once you had the ring? Before you were um, anxious about the ring, like does someone have a nicer ring? Is it- <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to come get the ring? Right. Yeah. Where do I keep this ring yeah. now that I now have what? it? Now <laughs> what? It's that great moment in, um, in the Redford film, The Candidate. I love that. Yeah. Where the last thing, the mo- last moment is now what? Mm-hmm. 
You know, it's all been about this journey towards this thing sure. without ever stopping to go ask, do I want the thing? Yeah. Just I got to get the thing. So, yeah. Um, well, there's still I think what it comes down to is it, it's it's really like uh, some version of, of uh, that kind of recovery observation is that, you know, in terms of your character defects and the manifestations of those and how they affect your life. Uh, that's what's relative to, you know, the, the necessity of, of harnessing it or stopping it or, or managing it. Like, do I still do behavior? Am I still hurting myself by having this thing? I think I'm at the point now where I, and then listening to your show religiously has driven me to, to an, my own realization. <laughs> yeah. Uh, about, you know what? At the end of it, or, and as well as in it. Yeah. It's about being true to yourself. And yeah. if, and if, and if suffering, yeah, wildly with your own shit is being true to yourself, then stop f- trying to figure it out. Tr- stop trying to cure it. Stop trying to right. Re- just accept it. Harness it. Yeah, it it makes you who you are, and why this show has become insanely uh, friendly to people, not just popular, but a comfort. So yeah, if you fix it, you're fucked. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious, and I don't think it's like someone who gets... That's like saying, relax, you're doomed. That, well, I don't... It's not like someone who's fat and who gets work because they're fat. Right, right. Comedy, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. I don't think it's that syndrome. Yeah. I think it is the audience, and in the documentary, when you're talking about that moment where you're on stage and the audience is like, this is Marin, he's going to get this. Yeah, yeah. Right? I had to include that. You understand, I had 70 hours of footage to carve a 94-minute, and no narrative, no story, no script. I had to create... A narrative. Yeah, it was interesting because it's impossible. It is impossible. But I, I think that the way you arced and, you know, finished it out, I, I think what it is, it's really the, the portrait of the mm-hmm. comic artist mm-hmm. through 70 people or however many people. 60 are something, yeah. 60 something people. Yeah, it got bigger than do you have to be miserable to be funny. That's it a, did. That's a I, lovely yeah. little notion of, yeah. of a film, but it's really 30 minutes. Right. You can't do 94 minutes on. Right. No, everything's talked about parenting, yeah. job, yeah. work ethic, yeah. uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, evolving as a comic personality, the liabilities of being a comic yeah. uh, in the real world. Mm. Uh, what else is in there? Also, uh, but you're watching people feign off talking about misery while attempting to talk about misery so that when jim gaffigan says he turns the question into a joke yeah. about annoyance yeah he's clearly going for the laugh there when in fact not comfortable to talk about well yeah he's uncomfortable yeah it's, i mean it's more than annoyance it's, and i i think that w- one of the parts that stood out for me was the, the moment where james brooks mm. says it's about feeling alienated or whatever he said that that the uncomfortable yeah like that, I think that really hits it. it, it is that a lot of us are sort of like, you know, no matter who, who accepts us at any given point in time, we always feel a little outside. Yeah. You know, and I, and I thought he was sort of smart about it without being too mor- morose. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the, the more honest people got about, well, I think one of the things you made me uh, think about, I don't know if you said the exact words, but what you made me think about was that our job as performers is to articulate the misery. Yeah. It isn't so much that we have to be miserable on stage or in front of people. Sure. We have to make it either universal. I think Steve Coogan talked about that. Either make it universal. Oh, that's happened to all of us. Or make it so personal. The audience doesn't have to worry about can they relate. They, yeah, they got the distance. They're like, just empathetic yeah. and laughing or this uncontrollably. Poor, this poor guy. Exactly. <laughs> Which yeah. is slipping on the banana peel. Slipping on the, ba- the banana peel. I get. I don't get no respect. Lewis Black's hands. Yes. And the fact that we had the baby picture, I don't know if you noticed, in the baby picture, he's doing a Lewis Black gesture. Is he really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because despite what anyone says about, like, everybody has problems, yes. But not everyone is as emotionally handicapped as people who choose this profession. Sure, there are plumbers who are depressed. Yes. You know, but yes. but they don't, you know, they're not, like, on stage, you know, fixing a toilet. It's about articulating it. You know, it, the misery is a universal human condition. Well, okay, well, what was the process of this, you know, of this uh, documentary? I know I was in it, but Jesus, how long did it take to put together? Well, um, I, you know, doing one of these shows uh, affords us a, a Rolodex to reach out to famous funny yeah, people. Yeah, but also, you you know, you're an actor. And, and, you've been around a long time. Yeah, we've shared trenches, but you also have to be have some interview chops to, right. to try to get these people to open up. Right. 
Um, and there's no question that the chat show informed all of that. Right. But, you know, the best way to get all those famous funny people in your movie is to not pay them. Right. Sure. Honestly. Yeah. If I had to pay any of them, then yeah. I'd have to deal with agents and lawyers and managers, and I'm fucked. Oh, yeah. Can't ever no. get it. No. So no. when we, it was a matter, we've got to shoot these four weeks consecutively. Oh, so that Who was am it. I going to get yeah. for these four weeks? Right. You've got to get a crew, and you got you know how it is. Right. Shooting your show, you have to m- yeah. meet these parameters. Yeah. So whoever was going to be available is who we were going to get. Now, I know you dedicated the film to Robin. Did you interview him? We were on the phone twice for almost an hour each time. Um, he was shooting the television series at the time uh-huh. and, you know, 14, 15 hour days. Uh-huh. And I had four or five day weeks. Yeah. And as much as I would like to say, well, let's just bring the crew down and talk to him in his trailer. Five minutes. Yeah. It, it, it just wasn't physically possible for him, his produ- producers, his production, and, and but, mine. Well, the, when I saw his name at the end, I was like, you know, I wonder, even if you had that footage. Right. You know, it would be hard to decide. Well, I took out a moment. First of all, uh, whether to he put it passed in while I was editing, which is why ultimately I decided to dedicate the film to him. And mm. clearly, it wasn't something I would have done her if he were alive. Yeah, right, That's right. painfully obvious. Yeah. But because he had been such a mentor of mine when I came on the scene in San Francisco, he had just become a made man, but spent all his time in San Francisco for stand-up. He, of course, would work out at the comedy store, sure. but he could not wait to get back to San Francisco yeah. and, and, and night a few of us, Slayton and yeah. a couple of us that were Do around. Do the Holy City Zoo? Yeah. And so- uh, I love Slayton. God, he's so good in your fucking movie. Oh, like I, there, you know, there's a like, rawness and a nakedness and a beautiful. But but he's he, but he's okay with himself. Oh, that's the thing. It's uh, one of the reasons I wanted to include him and a couple of others was these people should also be famous to you. Yeah, and yeah. and if you're a comedy junkie, you know who they are, and if you're not, you don't. But. Yeah. So the the flighty nature of fame and success, mm. uh, not based on talent. Yeah, uh, no, it's it's horrendous. Yeah, it's well, heartbreaking. There's, there's no rules or fairness. I, yeah. I used to have a a mantra: Chachi's a millionaire. Yeah, because this <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. because this kid, twelve or fourteen, yeah. walked onto a set of a famous sitcom and right. became a, 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 on the cover of Seventeen <laughs> yeah. magazine. Yeah, um, not based on anything else, mm-hmm. uh, talent wise or anything. And no disrespect to who that person is. Yeah. That's just the way show business works. Right. Yeah. There's no... It's horrifying. There's no correct path. No rule book. Yeah. And then, like, that's why you know, now when people talk to me, it's like, look, I don't know. No. If I just had... I You know, fi- once in my life, I had good cosmic timing. Yeah. You know, and I was ready to do what was necessary. Yeah. You know, it, things synced up, and I was ready for the job. But if I may, you also began with being proactive. Right. That, that's where it started. You said, fuck everyone else and everything else. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. going to do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And even though you had done that in your Wait, stand-up. Let's preface that with, what am I going to do? Well, <laughs> you, what am I going to do? <laughs> you've already prefaced it. <laughs> uh, but I just keep coming back to, that's the only advice I can give. Right. Is don't wait for anyone to figure this out for yeah, you. Yeah, they're not your Jump parents. Jump the fuck in. Yeah, show business is not your mommy. Yeah, put yeah. in your 10,000 hours immediately Yeah, and then talk to me. Yeah, no, but there's so much good stuff in the movie. The weird thing, the experience I had with some people, it's like, I don't, I don't like listening to this guy talk in person. <laughs> you know, so like, you know, <laughs> you know the, no reason to I mean, name names. No, no reason to name nope. names. You know, yeah, I, 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 I don't yeah. want to hear what this guy is saying sure, about anything. Sure. Uh, but you know, good guy. Sure, sure. Good guy. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't, doesn't matter who Just a terrific guy. I am the same way. I just came from a meeting with some people who foolishly think they'd like me to direct their film. And they started talking casting choices. And yeah. they said, what about this guy? And yeah. I, it, I, and I, I would like to direct their film. Yeah. I don't want to alienate them at this meeting. But I also have to be true to my school, mm-hmm. uh, which is difficult for me. I'm too much of a people pleaser, clearly. Yeah. clearly. Yeah. I mean, my act is nine seconds from Carrot Top. In the sense that it's tricks, no, it's yeah. parlor tricks, it's just tricks. Uh, so you know, it took me forever to but, actually but have your, a voice and defense, say something. Right, but in your defense, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, uh, you know, accessorize your your impressions. You, you, you know, <laughs> that's right. You don't put the hat on. <laughs> that's right. You, you know, you know. <laughs> You I cut. carried the Colombo coat the first nine years of my act from gig to gig. You did. And actually put it on. Okay. Yeah. 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 But then you I realize, mean, this is 30 years ago. But you let it go. 
I sure do. You let the coke go. And I also, for the last, that's right, for the last 10 years or more, I tortured the audience by insisting on doing straight stand-up for the first 20 minutes. Oh, Before good, they get a good. single voice. Like classic uh, Pollock stand-up or newer stuff? Uh, <laughs> there's no such thing as newer stuff, is there? You mean a point of view on what's happening in my life? Sure. Yeah, that makes no sense. Uh, I'll talk about uh, anything but that. Yeah. I leave that to the professionals. Sure. And 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 so I when meeting with these people and they suggested this actor, I ultimately said said yeah, n- just not a fan. And it and it was that same thing you were talking about, which is some people I don't care if it's you don't like their face. Yeah. I don't care if it's you don't like the way that they uh uh keep their chin higher than it needs right. to be when they speak. There's <laughs> yeah. just something in their essence yeah. that I want to set their face on fire. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, there's there's those. Sure. sure. This would be the time where I could like, you know, you know, Go cleverly the reference the people in the movie. Like from a list and act like I don't even have the list, and I could like go like uh, Stephen Merchant's in it, Dana Gould is in it, Judd uh, Apatow. Judd Apatow, Judd- by the way, uh, I thought was a revelation. Yeah, he, no, he was very articulate. James uh, James Brooks was in there, uh, uh, Jim Jeffries, uh, Kathleen Madigan, Lewis Black, Penn Jillett, Greg Proops. One of the one of the high boys for me was that horrifying picture of Proops back in the day. Yes, like what was that? <laughs> <laughs> the photos people chose to share with me. I could I could not believe that. Judd Apatow in the clown outfit from his youth. Well, that was cute. I mean, the kids' pictures are one thing, but that was proofs that like, what was he doing? Yes, like he looked like he was, uh, you know, like uh, he was in the David Bowie entourage. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, like they were doing a Bowie version of the Smothers Brothers. What, what yeah, that photo looks like? That, but no, but the other one of him solo with the hat on the side. Like, oh, yep, 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 yep. That what? was that was nineteen uh, probably eighty one. You San remember San him looking like that? Sure, that was the look. Yeah, you had. Because then eventually he went with the horn rims and the other thing. That was I met him in probably 80, 90 when he was doing that already. Yeah. So oh, so you're saying eighty one? Oh was yeah, probably looking like that. Yeah, because by the end of the eighties he was well done. Greed, the other thing we had to lean into greed is good at that point and wear a suit. <laughs> yeah, it was still groovy in eighty one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but yeah. who else? Who am I missing? Um, well, there's just so uh, many. A- Amy Schumer and uh, Jimmy um, Norton. Yeah. Maria it's Bamford, Jimmy Norton, also wildly naked as he should be with his Always. truth, and yeah. uh, and also the Cinderella, O&A. the pumpkin, O and A, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was also a thing in in post where I was like, huh, <laughs> how do I do I let Anthony look like a human? <laughs> is, that, is that the question? <laughs> yes. <laughs> do I allow do I allow this nice part of him yeah. to shine yeah. given the situation? Yeah, um, he did. He had a funny side, dude. But I mean, I cut, I edited for like almost 10 months because it was a puzzle that I, I could have had done that for five years. So, so much time had passed that people's yeah. lives had changed. Right. Um, oh, and uh, Christopher Guest. Yeah. And, and, and Martin, Martin Short. Sh- By the way, Martin Short talking about being so bitter he couldn't that was great. be happy. for. That's a side of him I don't know that we've seen. You know, so is that but it was of- it, it, it wasn't bitter. It was... It was... Un- uncapable, incapable of celebrating but, somebody's uh, Jealous. Happy. Yeah, jealous. Yeah. Absolutely jealous. Yeah. I love that story. Breakdown Corner. Breakdown Corner. Yeah. Yeah, because I know that feeling. Because what you want to do is cry. You'd, but, you'd like to just show. You'd like to show up at that party with your successful friends, start weeping, and go, "Why am I not yeah. like you? Why can't I be?" You well, that, <laughs> that's the unfortunate human condition too, though. And I think that's why Facebook is a multi-billion-dollar business, and that's why the thesis for the film grew to: uh, children suffer from "Hey, look at me" disease because they're children; they mm. need attention. Mm-hmm. Adults clearly suffer from that. Uh, that's why Facebook is a multi-billion dollar business. Mm-hmm. You have a page, you're somebody. Yeah. Who fucking chooses that as a career, as a devote your life to a I profession that is, hey, look the fuck at me. Yeah, I mean, I get that. But, you know, I think that, like, uh, you, you know, outside of the psychology of that, it seemed like most people... You know, have an experience with show business. They, 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 they see like you know, some people see a fireman, they want to be a fireman. No. You know, and and those of us for whatever reason, you know, just think it's amazing that you know you can get on stage and be an entertainer. You, you know, uh, to begin I, with, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I don't but when you said in the film, forgive me for interrupting. But when you said in the film, I saw these guys. Uh, comedians. They had, yeah. They had something to say. Well, they had something to say, and also they had uh, an angle. They had, they had a point of view, and they could handle things. They, they had a way handle of, things. Right. You said that they had a handle on it. Yes. You know what I mean? So they, great. But that was they it. made life seem doable. Right. Yeah. For like, you. Like you explained it. Yeah. You know, like and it's hilarious, and right. like oh, that's what that is. Oh, yeah. right. Exactly. You know, like so okay. for you, it was this or be a professor. 
it would be a professor, right? But it was, it was, I think what appealed to me was the point of view. Like, yeah. you know, like, who the hell am I? Yeah. What do I think about things? And right. they, like, comedians, you know, good ones, they definitely know those two things. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I had only one teacher all through school who I connected with, and it was because here's what you need to do to shape your mind. Yeah. Here's God, the, th- please tell me. Yeah. yeah exactly. Exactly. Oh, thank God. Stop telling me I what, <laughs> about the history of anything. Just tell yeah, me how I, I'm going to move yeah, forward yeah, yeah, in yeah, life. Without disintegrating yeah. and disappearing in every conversation. Yeah. See, I, I, I snuck a few Tom in Hanks. There. Yeah. Yeah. Tom Hanks and Larry David. Um, Tom Hanks was great. Larry David was great. I stole those beats, those beats. Pieces from the chat show. Obviously, the backdrop in both of them is just horrendous. That black, awful black backdrop. Oh, I didn't really, show. I didn't really notice. Good, um, but I had to include them because when I was shooting the film, mm-hmm. um, those interviews came up. So I just did the double release form and let them know I'm going to use this in the film. And then came to a section within the body of the interview for the chat show where I devoted it to the line of questions, right, that right, were right, in right. keeping with the film. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, and, and that worked out. And getting Tom Hanks they agreed to, to say it. 53 years of self-loathing darkness. That was surprising. Are you kidding me? Loved it. Yeah. That I have, and then you, then the mo- if you're a comic, the moment after you, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah, yeah, but that he found stand-up to be like crystal meth, you know, and and the the when he was uh, gearing up to do punchline. I don't acknowledge that uh, anymore. I don't like. I don't acknowledge the rush of getting the laugh. For me, it's sort of the broader rush of feeling connected. I don't think it's getting the laugh either. I think it's being on stage and literally being in control of the ride for an hour. Yeah, or whatever. But the and time also is. being like having that connect. You know, like yeah. that one mind thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. that that's attributed to your act and a few other people's. That's yeah. not everyone's experience. Right. Right. Um, to be able to connect on that level. But I do know what you're talking about. When yeah. it happens, there's no greater drug, well, it's the best. drug yeah. than that. Yeah. And like recently I've just been like, because I've been a little kind of nervous about stand up and like I keep doing it, but like I'm like, oh Christ, I fucking, what am I going to do? What's it? And I got a lot of material, but like lately I've been, like I took some turn like last week. Like, you know, all of a sudden you, you, you part of you, you realize like I've been doing this my whole life. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not an open micer. Right. What am I worried about? Well, what do you that, think's going to happen? I think out there? the dread yeah. that you're sensing. It's how I prepare. May may be not only true to your school, but I think it also is bigger than that. I think it's also. I know how good this can be. I I know those moments when it all clicks and it all right. works, and I make the co- connection. And the dread of having to get to that place successfully again and the responsibility of that right, right, and yeah. the expectations yeah. of that that you put on yourself is, crazy. is fueling the dread. Yeah, I try to turn all that shit off and it's naturally happening to me as, as I age. Like I can't keep it all in my head. The, but it's uh, that weird cure-all too when you actually get on the stage. You know, the old... Right, when you just feel like you know right away whether it's what kind of night it's going to be. Yeah. Lately, it's like I, I have this joke that, you know, I it's sort of buried or sometimes I, I don't do it. And then I, I started to realize because I'm doing sets at the store where I'm just kind of punching it out, just trying to you know do tight sets to you know keep that relationship going to work out. And I moved this one joke to the open. Like I was like, there was a time, man, where it all hinged on that opening joke. Like you know you're gonna oh, you yeah. gotta have that strong opening joke. And I hadn't really thought about that in a long time, you know. But in a club situation. And in a 15 minute set, I was like, why don't you put that one up front? And then all of a sudden I'm like, I, I know the joke I'm going to open with. And I, like a lot of times, like I didn't. I'm like, what the fuck am I going to open well, with? Well, when you do a bigger venue, they're you giving you the it. first two, yeah. three minutes. Sure. And they're settling in. And they're, yeah. It, it, they've, they've paid a babysitter. It's a whole different experience. Right. And you go into a tight room with 37 people. Yeah. You've got a bang in the yeah. first 15 right. seconds to relax everyone's sphincter. Right. Yeah. Right. And after the person before you just killed. Yeah. Oh, and well. they're, and they're like, so, uh, so the, just the, the elation of like, wow, that joke works as I an opener. my opening joke. Yeah. 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 Yes. I've spent far too much time. Yeah. I mean, I got to the point where I would come up with just a little throwaway. Uh, as yeah. I, as I'm walking out and taking taking the mic, right? It's something as simple as uh, please be seated. Yeah, <laughs> to a sitting audience, <laughs> just as a way to yeah. put everything. You know, it's just a that moment. Yeah, that moment. Yeah, it's right. Well, lately, what I've been doing is I'll, I'll take the mic stand and I'll bend down and mm-hmm. I'll put my foot literally on the table yeah. of the front row uh-huh. and I'll lean down and I'll just say, uh, "I'm going to bono the fuck out of this set." <laughs> Great. Yeah. Great. And I just hold it. Give him a visual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The idea that you found an opening joke and it actually resonated 
oh my god, this is this is an open. I remember that. Yeah, I remember like yeah, you used to want to you want to get right in. That's the greatest uh, for the rest of mankind. Yeah, that would be the first time you found. Uh, the hidden Easter egg that no one else could find, and you, uh, and you get to do that over and over again. But I just like I it'd been a long time since I thought that way. Yeah, you know, I'm like oh, I'm well, just gonna go, go up and kind of you know like to to like and it's specifically a club set mentality where you're like I just want to get in. Oh man. yeah, you probably went away from that purposely. I'm not gonna go out there and have yeah, I don't care. Joke. Like you know, but like at the comedy store, it's like and it's packed and it's sort of like, do I want to bungle through? No, you, you, you don't. <laughs> You don't, and also you're not doing that much time. Right, and they'll shut down on you, that room. In that OR, man, it's like if you're not hitting, it's like they're not going. They're not, no sympathy there. Listen, this kind of talk hopefully is what uh, the purpose of the film, the documentary was to, to, if you're a comedy junkie in particular, if you're a comedy nerd, as Mm -hmm. we love, um, one of the things written was a master class on on what it really means to do this. Mm -hmm. So at best, I guess that's... That's great. If so, you if you if it's your thing. Well, so, congratulations, and I do need to tell you that, like, uh, you know, what do we? Okay, so how long do you think I talked to you in the garage with the, for that interview that you took pieces of for the movie? Probably a couple hours, right? Oh no, just a little over an hour. A little over an hour. All right. Well, we've talked for thirty three minutes. I'm looking for a good eight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you think you have it? <laughs> I'll take I'll take eleven, but if you need to only make it eight. Uh, no, I, I loved it. I was uh, proud to be part of it. And, oh, you know, thanks, man. It really meant a lot to me that you were a part of it, because I'll be honest with you, there were very few people who... I wanted I wanted famous people, of course, and yeah. I wanted people who would open up, but very few people I felt like would get to the heart of it for real. Yeah. And so Kevin Smith and Penn Jillette and oh, yeah, you Kevin, yeah. and and, and, um, and Judd uh, and Jimmy Norton, and there were just a handful that I knew would really yeah, yeah. say it. Yeah. So thanks. Good luck with the whole process yeah well i've it's already succeeded that's the thing yeah you know getting into sundance and then the tribeca sale and then we just sold the foreign so i win i'm done you're done go see it oh that's it please so that doesn't matter to you though, well bro. it matters because you want people to come up to you and say i saw the thing it was good yeah you did a good thing yeah you did but a good the, job on the, the financiers everybody's happy and i get to do it again and that's you know those are the victories right yeah well yeah yeah you keep working yeah So go check out that movie, all right? Misery loves comedy. Now, what do we got? A lot of small businesses get stuck doing things the old way, just out of habit, including things that can can be so time-consuming, like mailing and shipping. If you're still making trips to the post office, you need Stamps.com. With Stamps.com, you can do all your mailing and shipping right from your desk. Never go to the post office again. Print postage for any letter or package using your own computer and printer, then hand it to your mail carrier or drop it in a box. A mailbox, preferably. Stamps.com is convenient and easy to use, and it will save you money. You'll get special postage discounts you can't even get at the post office, yo. You also don't have to enter into an expensive multi-year commitment like you do with those postage meters. Stamps.com is just fifteen ninety nine a month. That's it, folks. Fifteen ninety nine a month. You know we use it here on WTF, and we mail a lot of stuff. If it works for us, it'll work for you. Right now, use my promo code WTF to start a no-risk trial, plus get a $110 bonus offer that includes a digital scale and up to $55 of free postage. Don't wait. Go to Stamps.com, and before you do anything else, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in WTF. That's Stamps.com. Enter WTF. On the road, man. This is a nice quiet hotel room i always wonder if people hear me shouting this shit out in the hallway if they're like why is he yelling into the phone like he's on the radio show that's part of it man it's part of the job so like keith richard said it's the job buddy it's the job so occasionally we get these opportunities to uh to interview big uh big movie people and rose Byrne is here uh, well, she's in the garage. Well, she was in the garage. Well, I'm, we're going to the garage now. Well, let's enter it that way. Uh, her new film, Adult Beginners, is uh, is funny. Bobby Cannavale, is that how you say his name, is in it. He's funny. He's always good. Nick Kroll's in it. He's good. Rose Byrne is in it. She's good. Uh, that uh, opens uh, this Friday, April 24th. And also look for her in Spy with Melissa McCarthy, which opens on May 22nd. And now you can listen to me talk to her. Back in the garage. Do 
you do voiceovers oh. ever? No, I wish. You never it's have. A good paycheck. <laughs> yeah. Never done any cartoons? You've I never did been? One line on American Dad. <laughs> that was it? And they didn't ask me back. <laughs> no, but yeah, that was it. It's amazing how it, it seems so effortless that you can talk with an American accent. And, oh, thank you. But, like, is it hard? Like, to, because, like, if I tried to speak like an Australian or a British person, it would take everything I had to focus on that. Is it the same it's going the other way? Sometimes is, but it's, we grew up in Australia with a lot of American television. So the vernacular is really right. familiar sound. Yeah. And I've gotten better at it. Yeah. Well, I think actually lately I've gotten worse. Really? I don't know why. <laughs> I just watched, um, I, I watched a new movie, Adult Beginners. Yeah. I watched it. Oh, great. Sat there and watched the whole thing. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, to, so I'd have something to talk about. Good. Well, I would love to talk about it. You would? Yeah. <laughs> See, the dog is sometimes part of the show. Oh, great. It's not even my dog. We started, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're, we're almost done, <laughs> we're apparently. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, we're, we're just about oh, out of time. What sort of dog have you got? It's not my dog. It's my neighbor's dog. Oh, sorry. So if it becomes a real problem, I'm just going to have to go shut that window. Uh, no, but I, I, I watched it, and I was, it was very funny, and I noticed that a lot of times that um, you, you sort of play a straight person for mm-hmm. goofballs. Yes. That, that's your, your task. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you, does that, um, do you ever want to be the goofball? The goofball. Sure. I mean, I've have you know, I I have had roles where like in a this movie Get Him to the Greek I played a really that. um That's funny. obnoxious yeah. pop star <laughs> who to- was very <laughs> wild and very you know, yeah. real narcissist and yeah. basically a female version of Russell Brand right. who was so ridiculous and yeah. self absorbed. Yeah, and same with the yeah. one in Bridesmaids. You were sort of like yeah, snotty. Yeah, she was, she was a little more uptight, though. Like, Jackie Q was just wild. Whereas right. Whereas Helen was so preoccupied with what people thought of her. And- but I thought that the uh, Adult Beginners movie was very touching. You, you know, I'm a grown man with no children. I kind of blew it. So, you know, it hit a lot of buttons with me. And I know Nick Kroll pretty well. He's been on the show a couple of times. Oh, great. So, you know, yeah. he's uh, got to be pretty fun to work with. He is. And he produced it and came up with the story and then took it to these writers, Liz um, Flayhive and Jeff Cox. So he's, it's his baby. The whole thing is really very much his, like... Nick's? Yeah, absolutely. It was his, you know, and he's pre-produced it with the with Mark Duplass and and Ross Katz. Duplass, so the Duplass brother. Yeah, the kings yeah. of Hollywood. Yeah, they had like we were at South by Southwest. And yeah, the with that movie. Yeah, and they but they had like yeah so many films there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know? And then they, they got like yeah. a ninety picture deal with yeah. Netflix, right? Ninety oh, or a hundred really? pictures. I didn't know that. <laughs> Not <Are> ninety, <gasps> maybe three or six or something. Well, yeah, it's good though. That's great. No, they're yeah, they're ubiquitous. Yeah, yeah. I I, I think I know what that word means. It sounds right. <laughs> Does that mean <laughs> means they're all everywhere. over? They're everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I had Mark in here. Uh, yeah, Mark. I don't know the other one. He seemed like they have their shit together, which mm. annoys me. Yeah, uh, yeah. People <laughs> who have their shit together in general, I find disconcerting. Like I don't understand how You're they're doing. Okay, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Well, yeah. I mean, sure, short. I can do that stuff. <laughs> You know what I mean? But like, you know, he's one, like the Duplass guys, you look in their eyes and you're like, they're solid. You know, like I don't necessarily think that someone looks in my eyes and they're like, that's a comforting chap. (laughs) (laughs) And you're, so your real boyfriend was your husband. Yes. My real boyfriend was my husband. Bobby. Cannavale. Yeah. He's, he's great. I always like seeing him. Thank you. I remember seeing him a long time ago. Was he maybe in the, he was a New York guy, right? Still is a New York Mm -hmm. guy. Yep. He's maybe in the yeah. first season of Louis, or did he do Louis one of Louis short a few films? Of Louis, yeah, he's done a few of the shorts and a few episodes. Right, I remember yeah. him back from the shorts. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Because I used to live in New York. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yep. He used to know Louis for a while. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah. So, all right, now let's go through the life because it's <laughs> you know Australians kind of fascinate me. I talked to Melanie Linsky. She's from New Zealand, though. Oh yeah, uh, I, I know. I don't know, but I've met her before. She's yeah. Yeah, you guys should close. be friends. They're close. They're just like they're, right. you know, New yeah. Zealand and Australia, closer than New Zealand and, and Australia and America. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. Like in New Zealand, you can kind of go like, I'm going to go to New Zealand for the weekend, just take a plane, right? Like an hour, right? Two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah, so it's way out there. Yeah. <laughs> so we're. I know. It's like going to Miami from New York. Right, but yeah. it's like, do you, did you do that growing up? Did you go to vacation in I New never Zealand? Went to New Zealand for Ever in your life? No. No, they have they have sheep and stuff. I know exotic the, uh, wool. The Lord of the Rings. Yeah, it's you know? all there. Peter Jackson is. It's, it's always there, gorgeous. shooting something. I went to Queenstown once, once in the South Island and shot a commercial, and it was stunning. It's yeah. a ski town, and it yeah. was summer. But the yeah. you know 
the landscape is just breathtaking. And, did, and where'd you grow up in Australia? I'm from the city. I, I lived in an area called Balmain, which is a sort of near the harbour, but it was a very working class neighbourhood and my parents moved there in the 70s. And it's very close to the centre centre of the city. In Sydney? In Sydney, yep. Well, Sydney's got yeah. that beautiful beaches. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's a good city. It's beautiful. It's good Absolutely food. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful food. Yeah. Weather, I mean, it is a stunning place and to your, your, live. And your parents moved there once? They, I mean, they're both from Sydney and they've, they, you know, they so they lived there their whole lives. Really? Yep, yep. Pretty much. And now they moved to Tasmania, which is an island off the coast of Australia, part of Australia. I don't know why that doesn't sound good to me. Tasmania. Maybe it's just a name. It does, are there people? Are they the first, among the first, the first ones? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on um, down there? Yeah, what is going on down there? So it's gorgeous. Oh, it's, it is. It's, um, it's, but it is, it does have a lot of, um, colonial heritage, uh-huh. you know, Bad stuff. Like the bad stuff. Yeah, there's a very famous jail there called um, Port Arthur uh-huh. Jail, where a lot of the, um, you know, it was a jail for convicts. So when wasn't all of Australia convicts initially? They were well, white Australia. Yeah, we were all, you know, they were sent there on the boats to eradicate a class of people from England, and then they were sent to live out their sentences in in Australia, and then they got, and then they got to hang out with the people who, you know, put them in jail right. <laughs> after they were done with their sentences. <laughs> Right. So the so the people that end up in jail after they've already come to Australia at a certain point at that time must have been really shitty people. Well, yes and no. I mean, I guess so. Yeah, then you get to hang out. It's so weird. It was such a, a weird experiment. Do like, you know you your know. family heritage? No, I would love to. I would love to know. And I was going to do that show, Who Do You Think You Are? At oh, one shit. point, but I couldn't figure out the schedule. But I would love to know just, my just, heritage. It'd be nice to have a show do it. You, you know, yeah. like they'll yeah. take care of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Instead of <laughs> yeah. getting know. off my own you right. know, uh, yeah. laurels and my own ass and doing it or whatever. Getting on that website yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you there's, guys a, do that. there's a good thing now. I've girlfriend was telling me that you can just send your saliva. Yeah, oh, for the genetic yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, that's the genetic thing. Right, so, you, so. then you get sort of a breakdown. Yeah. Of of, uh, yeah, and it's all, it's very surprising. Yeah, she was surprised. Yeah, yeah was why? Surprised. Which, what was her surprise a gift inside of her she genes? She was like mostly, right, she thought she was mostly like Russian, Eastern European, and she found out she had some African in her. Don't we all? I think we probably <laughs> do. <laughs> it's not such a surprise, let's face it. <laughs> so when did you, what, what kind of... What kind of background do you come from? What did your folks do? Um, my mum was a homemaker until we were probably, till I started school. And then she worked at a Aboriginal primary school, you know, yeah, the indigenous, indigenous yeah. um, culture and population in Australia. And so she worked at a school there in the administrative office for a long time, a really great school called Darlington. In Sydney? Yeah, in Sydney, in a place called Redfern, which is a, you know, a very Aboriginal suburb. Oh, so it was like, uh, they were, it was segregated to a degree? No, not, no, that's a harsh word. Right. I don't think segregated, but just like... It they was, had their neighbourhood. Yeah, it was a, it was like a, a sort of, an, an, a, yeah, neighbourhood really. And mm-hmm. so it was a priority school for that, which was great. So they, you know, they very much respected the culture and didn't try to sort of there's a lot of different, you know, in Aboriginal culture, it's not polite to look your elders in the eye, whereas for us, it's very much you have to look people sure. in the eye, so yeah. you don't make them do that, for instance, you know. Yeah. Oh, so she had to kind of learn the social m- m- rules. Yeah, she yeah. did. It was really interesting. So she she um, she um was really on the front line, uh, which uh, was cool. Yeah, we I mean, we all went to the school a lot growing up. To that school? Uh, well, yeah, we didn't, I didn't attend the school because right. I was outside of the zone, but... Right. Um, but we would go in there and see her a lot. Um, and my dad ran a company, his own company. He worked mainly for Village Roadshow doing like statistics. Um, like, so if they wanted to build a new cinema, yeah. he would go and like, um, do the surveys of the area, like ask, interview people, you know, would you go to this cinema if it oh, was right. filmed? Hey, right. <laughs> so we all worked for him. We'd all go, we all did the phone surveys. And that, yeah, that's a movie company, really... a movie, a theater company or? Yeah, what? Village Road So is like Lowe's or something oh, really? like that. So he would work for them. So he'd go do yeah. uh, recon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like statistical recon sure. work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he was a mad fanatic, um, horse better. Bet on the horses. So he had a gambling problem. So <laughs> he also had a gambling problem. <laughs> 
<laughs> you put that very nicely. Oh, he just loved the, those horses. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> I guess. But we never like lost the house or anything like no, that because he had the job. You know, he had a regular job. But he loves numbers. He does. Yeah. So he just likes the handicap. Crunches and, the numbers. Oh yeah. <laughs> like how much of that horse eats? Exactly. What he went, uh, how you know? What's so, the odds of this thing and that? So thing did you spend a lot of uh, time at the track as a kid? I did. Yeah, I went to the track quite That's a bit. Good. That's um, a healthy upbringing. Which is- <laughs> Because you don't know better. It's like, come watch the horses. Daddy's going to put his wife on the line, money-wise. Yeah. I think my mom said never marry a punter at one point. And a punter is a... A, a punter is a better... Oh. A be- what do you say in, in America? Gambler. Gambler. Yeah, yeah, right. So a punter is... Like yeah, a oh, really? So she said that. Yeah, she said that to me. She oh. was sort of half-joking, I think, right. but she did say it. How many brothers and sisters you got? I'm the youngest of four, so I've got sister, sister, brother, me. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. there are any of them in yeah. show business? My brother is a, I mean, not really. My brother's a musician and a photographer. He has a really incredible, um, I'm just going to promote him a little bit. He sure. does a great, uh, um, Instagram following. He's a photographer. Uh, so he's at, at George underscore burn, B Y R N E. Um, and he has, um, he has about 30,000 followers now, maybe more. Um, Beautiful prints. He takes kind of moody, beautiful prints of um, L.A. Oh, he's here? He's here? Yeah, he lives in lives in Silver Lake. Oh, did you go see him? Yeah, we saw him this morning. I went uh, down to the printing shop with him. But they're gorgeous photos. I'll show you when we're done here. Okay. I'll show you. They're really beautiful. Um, so he's here. And my sister is a painter, Alice, and lives in Melbourne. And my other sister, Lucy, works for the Australian Council of the Arts. And she, she lives in Sydney. So you're all kind of in the so arts. So they are sort of all artistic, but my parents weren't. They How'd weren't. that happen? We grew up in Balmain, which is sort of like an old drinking little village peninsula that was yeah. full of artists. Oh, so really? So I think, well, somehow, I don't know. They don't know Do you remember either. them around, the artists? Well, like, did I you, mean... parents have friends? Did you have some strange experience with uh, an acting, <laughs> uh, you know, like, did you go to a play? What happened? Like, I started going to acting school when I was eight because my sister's best friend, Rosie Fisher, who's now my one of my dear friends, she told me to go, and there was a lot of kids in my neighborhood who went. And to acting of, school? Yeah, to this little acting school. Just course. for fun? For fun, yeah. yeah and so fun. all the kids were there doing yeah. little plays? Yeah, like, really barely a play. More like um, games. Because mm-hmm. I was eight. I was so little. Eight. Yeah, I was really What do you learn as an actor? Were you learning yeah. method? <laughs> at eight, were you doing Meis- Strasbourg. Yeah, Meisner exercises Strasbourg. at eight? Strasbourg, sense memory, mm-hmm. remember when the cat died, remember when... What a crying eight-year-old. I wouldn't give my, <laughs> you know, she wouldn't give me the lolly oh. or whatever. Uh, no, I'm more like, pretend you're a tree. Pretend mm-hmm. you're, oh. you know... Well, that's like- good, sort of the same thing. <laughs> More or less. A little more basic. Exactly. It's honoring the emotional construct of a child. Exactly. Pretend you're a dog. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> but you stuck with it, huh? I stuck with it, man. <laughs> For better or worse. I did. Well, when did you start? Like, yeah. how did it go? So you were in there at eight and then you kept that. going? I was very shy. I was really quiet. Yeah. Quite shy. And then I loved it, loved going to class and kept going. And then a casting director came once scouting for, like, kids for a film. And I got a part in this film because of this scout. And now How old were you? 13. We, oh, so you were in for a while. You, so you were a shy kid and acting enabled you to, to do something, I to get out so. of yourself. I think so. Yeah. Probably that's a pretty <laughs> classic <Basic>. story. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Are yeah. you shy now? So. It can be in certain situations. Yeah. So 13, you mm. get a part in a movie. Yeah, so I've got this part in a movie with Sandra Bernhardt, of all really? people. Yeah. And she was probably, what, in her 20s? She was in her early 30s, yeah. probably, at that point, Sandra. She was, She's been in here. Has she? Sure. She's fabulous. Yeah, a long She's time awesome. ago now. She was with this gorgeous, her girlfriend at the time was this beautiful South American supermodel called Patricia Val- Valquez. Oh, and she was gorgeous. I kind of remember that. Uh, stunning. And so I, we did this, she came to Australia and did this film called Dallas Doll. What was the what was the plot of that? What's the pitch? The pitch of that is a American woman sort of invades this Australian family and convinces them to spend all their money to open a golf course and country club. I kinda remember that movie. Bizarre little Yeah, like film. weird. Who the hell directed that? Uh whose big idea was that thing? <laughs> <laughs> and and Turner wrote and directed it. Uh-huh. Uh, so that was, yeah. And once I was I did that, then I was on like casting lists. So I would in go Australia in, and, in Australia, and I would go in and audition for things. But I finished school. I went to university and so on. University, university. We call them colleges. I know. I like the I like the difference. Somebody, <laughs> I was at a hotel in Boston the other night, and someone uh, said the lifts are around the corner. I'm like, no, they're not. 
Not in this country. <laughs> Those are elevators, my friend. I'm not transitioning to lift. I say to my boyfriend Bobby all the time, get you know, get off the footpath or or come on the footpath, and he's like, what? What are you talking about? And I'm like, the footpath. And he's like, it's a sidewalk. <laughs> That's happened more than once? <laughs> oh, all the time. We have a saying, 60-40. He understands about 40% of what I say. That sounds perfect. The rest of the time, he's like, what? What? Exactly. What? It's probably why we're what, still have together. You, have you figured out the percentage that he's not listening? What's that? Yeah, for? that's the next That's the next <laughs> statistic we need to come up with. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, it's interesting that you worked with him in that movie because, you, you know, I didn't. I actually didn't know it until after I watched the movie. Mm-hmm. That you two were together, and uh, it sort of makes sense how how uh, you know emotionally available he was. I mean, I'm sure he oh, could do it as an actor, uh-huh. you know. Yeah. But you know, but there was something. There is another dimension to it. It seemed. Yep. Oh, I good. Think. Yeah, I feel like you can. I mean, with we well, can really make out and stuff. We a you can really make out. B it's very economic choice for the producer because they get one car pull to take us to work. So yeah. <laughs> it's like... But the but the emotional shorthand is there, and it's sort of like I think that sometimes. You know, if the script isn't perfect, that's hard to manufacture, you know, mm-hmm. a history with somebody else. Yeah, I agree. And it's, yeah, that's what we're interested about doing. We've actually done three jobs together and this script was um, just, we both loved it. I read it first and I read that role of, of Danny and I thought, God, Bobby would be great for this. And then it ended up, they had actually written it for him. So it was quite fortuitous. It's a tricky bit of business that, like, there are some turns in that movie that are, are, are a little difficult emotionally and I really wonder... Uh, about the reality of certain situations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like if what happened in the yeah. movie happened in real life, yeah. could you be forgiving? Yeah, it's a big... Well, I I don't know. In my life, I've never had to deal with it. I don't have a family, I don't have kids, sure. so that's a whole different addition to, yeah, yeah. to a, a question like that. But um, it definitely happens. <laughs> it sure yeah, does. We both it. know that. <laughs> at that <laughs> time. Forgiveness happens. At that time. Yeah. Oh, forgiveness happens. Yeah. I thought you meant like that. Uh, oh, well. I feel I don't know, want to spoil the movie. Yeah, for that happens too. But, but How long have you been with him? Yeah. We've been together for about three, two and a half years. Oh, okay. Three years. Pretty, yeah. pretty, so it's still good. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, he's fun. <laughs> he seems like a good guy. He's a good guy. Seems solid. Guy. I liked him in that Woody Allen movie, the last movie. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Wasn't she amazing, Kate? Kate was amazing. I was. Dice was amazing. Yeah. Everybody was Sally pretty Hawkins. good. Yeah, she was great. She's British, she's right? Yeah, English. Yeah. All right. So getting back to Louis this, too. Yeah, oh, Louis was good yeah. too. Louis was sweet. You know, yeah. he can. You know, he's he can be sweet. Uh, you know, in terms of like sometimes when he he plays a character that isn't him. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought that was a pretty lovable character until you, you know the turn at the end. When yeah, he, he's yeah, kind yeah. Of, he was kind of being a dick. Yeah, then he totally just didn't yeah, show up. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. so what were the other movies you worked with him on? Um, we did Annie. Recently, the recent. I sorry, I didn't miss. I missed that. Remake. I missed it. Okay. I, th- I missed it with everybody else. <laughs> I'll send you a DVD. People liked you in it, though. Oh, did they? Yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> did you get some bad press? <laughs> I think I stopped reading the reviews after a while. Well, that was the, for the movie. I mean, like that, that movie came and went. I was like, what's happening? And then it's gone. It's so weird, man. It's so weird when those billboards hang around. I know. Of failures. Of, you know, like, I know, mm-hmm. isn't it? Yeah. So what, what, oh, just a, it's like a, an exhibit of what didn't work. I know. Go. Like ghosts yeah. hanging over yeah. the street. <laughs> ghosts of failure. God. Um, what what yeah. other ones you do with him? And then, so we did that and then we did, um, oh, Spy. Uh-huh. This movie with Melissa McCarthy. Is that her movie? Yeah. So it's Melissa and me and Jason Statham and Bobby and Jude Law. Is that one that her husband wrote? No. Oh, Paul oh. Feig wrote and directed it, who did Bridesmaids and the Paul Heat. Paul Feig. Yeah, yeah, he's great. Yeah. He's been in here. Has he been in here? I was going to say, <laughs> if he has. They've all been in here. Yeah. So you feel more comfortable now? You feel like it's... <laughs> no, a... I knew they had been. I, I looked at you. Yeah. Because I project and I thought, like, you walked in and you're like, what is this? <laughs> what have I agreed to do? This is ridiculous. This is house. I think my resting face looks a little sullen, but it's not. I promise. Well, you know, it's weird when you're like a movie actress. You know, people just sit there and project things onto you. You know what I mean? Yeah, like maybe that's it. She must be like this. Yeah, I mean, it's all it's all very intimidating sometimes. Yeah, right. But I feel better. I feel okay <laughs> about it. You see, me. I do that to people. Sure, of course. Watching them, you yeah, definitely like, just. Yeah. That guy's got to be Project horrible. Whatever you want onto them, <laughs> don't you? That's yeah. why, like, Kate Moss is so great because she's so like yeah. ultimate model because it's like anything and, you and want. Still, and still, it's and it's still. astounding. Yeah, she's it's just, like got to be going on in like twenty, thirty years. Yeah, and she still looks she's, great. She just is like unstoppable. Uh-huh. Yeah. So when you were coming up in Australia, I mean, they've got their own little film world mm-hmm. and TV world. That's, yeah. 
Like it seems that, you know, if you have talent, eventually you'll get your turn down there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, it was such a, it's only 25 million people in Australia. It's I know. tiny, you know, as you know. And they're all on the coast, like, yeah, cause there's of the nothing population in the population is all on the coast. What's in the middle? What's in the middle? I mean, have you been to the middle? I haven't. But you, what, you have, you've never been to the middle? No. You've never been to New Zealand? I know. Well, I have. I've been to New Zealand. Just to shoot. I did go to Queenstown to right. shoot the Sony commercial. Um, but I haven't. I haven't been to Uluru, which is a beautiful rock in the middle of Australia in the desert. Um, I have been to Alice Springs. I made the mistake with Nick Cave to assume that like uh, all you uh, Australian celebrities know each other. We had a re- rocky <laughs> start, me and Nick Cave. <laughs> rocky start in, in the conversation. <laughs> Did he warm up? Kind of. Yeah. Do you know him? I don't. I uh, don't at all. You a fan? No. Uh, I mean, I, I respect... I, I don't know his music that well either, no. But I, well, what I music love do you know? Stuff. What do I know? Yeah, what do you know, Rose? Um, who'd, you, who'd you grow up liking? What did you rock out to? What did I like? Um, As a kid. I copied my brothers and sisters quite a lot. So, Older brothers you know, and sisters. Yeah, they, so I copied what they were listening to a sure, lot. Sure, sure. So that was, you know, yeah. reggae and, oh, yeah? you know, sure. old music like yeah. Zeppelin and Jimmy Zeppelin. Hendrix Zeppelin, that's and, timeless music. You know, all those that's sorts not of things. Old. That, yeah. that, and then I really got into techno. Did you? I raves and went to like, a lot of techno and stuff like that. When you were a kid? Teenager. Yeah? Yeah. So you like, you yeah. know, take E yeah, and yeah. go, <laughs> well, say it. Oh, no, no. I never went that far. But I did, oh, I, I did go did. to, Come I on. did go to, um, the rave parties and yeah. I, yeah, I so would, you, I'm trying to think of like the Carl Cox, DJ Carl Cox and stuff like that. Yeah. And then I woke up one day and I was like, this is terrible. Oh, <laughs> I don't really? want to go to these anymore. But yeah. But it was a thing to do, right? Just dance all night <laughs> totally. and wear a silly hat. Being a teenager, dancing, um, and then in my twenties, I oh, I really got into the Beastie Boys. I yeah, that's them. good. All that right, you really leveled off. Good. Yeah. Uh, and then f- heavy into folk. Like then I started. You know, Later after the twenties, I guess yeah. so. Like Cat Power and. Oh, you got you got a little you know, sad, nostalgic Amelia for your Tor- youth. Torini and your heart grew you know, heavy. Yeah, all that uh, pre earnest. Uh huh. Is that when stuff. you weren't in a relationship or? Oh no, I was. A, a I trouble, was a troubled relationship, <laughs> difficult. <laughs> I was. With um, an actor? Uh, yeah, with yeah. an actor writer. Yep, yep. How uh, long were you with that yeah. guy? Seven years. Uh, yep. Was it just a horror yep. show? Yep. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Anyone had... we know? No. It's Australian no, fella? No, yeah. Yeah. Australian. Is he doing all right? Or? He's great. Good. He's fantastic. He's brilliant uh, and wonderful and a friend. And no. Oh, really? He's, yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Who broke up yeah. with who? Mutual. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, lucky you. Yep. That worked out, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. Just hit the wall, huh? Hit the wall. Those things happen. <laughs> Those things happen. But, uh, but he, but he had great taste in music, so. So that's where you got into so the folk? I, yeah, I got fantastic, um, music tips from him. Do you know that British folk person? What's her name? Laura Marlin? Mar- yeah. You do? Yeah, I love her. I love Lucinda Williams. She's a, She's been here. Oh, has she? What's yeah. she like? She's amazing. Is she? I love her. She's the greatest. Really? I wouldn't call her folk, though, but I love her. No, I wouldn't either. Yeah. What would you say? Country, Country rock. Country, yeah. And rock and roll. Yeah. yeah. She's just, her voice is like... She sang in here, yeah. Did she? Yeah, she was, that was astounding, because I'm a huge fan, and she told an amazing, uh, disturbing story. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, you got to listen to it. I will listen to it. Pretty sweet. I know she's an interesting character and stuff. Yeah, she's a doll. She came with... A, she's uh, married to her manager, who's uh-huh. a nice guy. He's uh-huh. a little younger than she is, and yeah. he seems to love her, and... And she, uh, you know, she's just got a great story. Her father was a, a pretty uh, intense poet, recently passed away. And right. she, um, it was before that. But, uh, you know, I, I was just ecstatic to have her in here. Wow. All right, wait. So <laughs> let's go back to your, your amazing child uh, stardom. Yes. Well, hardly. Hardly. Uh, then, so 13, yes. you're in the movie with Sandra Bernhardt. So I did that movie with Sandra, which uh, kind of came and went. I didn't even know if it got a release, actually. But I kind of have this vague memory of it, you know, being you know, here, seeing it written about, and that was odd. Okay. Did you see the movie? Bizarre. I did. Yeah, I mean, years ago I saw it. Mm-hmm. Uh, years ago I saw it. Yeah. How are you yeah. at watching yourself? Not great. Mm. I wish I was better because I think it's actually constructive. You know what I mean? You can watch yourself and go. I don't know, yeah, stop to, doing that with your face. Yeah, something is <laughs> stop doing that, or you know, that or, or, how about, or, or how about like, oh, you did a good job, or you did a good job, or whatever. But like, it's all a bit overwhelming, and I just uh, yeah, I can't. Down. Sometimes I have to wait a year or two. 
Really? Yeah, other times. Yeah, if I do, well, usually, well, I do uh, my show on IFC, but lately, like, I can, like, I'm not fundamentally an actor, but I can see I've gotten better. Mm-hmm. So that, yeah, yeah. That's, that's enough. Interesting. Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, like, I still think, like, uh, could have, but mm. th- 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 I think I've gotten better. You did-, <laughs> did you work so, with a coach? No. No. <laughs> no. I should have maybe. I thought about it, but there's no time on that on the type of production we do. Like, right. there's really yeah, no time right. for yeah. like we're shooting an episode in three days, so right. there's no time for even real rehearsals. Yeah, right. But you know, I had a lot of input. But uh, do you work with coaches? I have in the past. Oh yeah. Well, where was totally. the where was the real training then? So you're 13, you do that movie, and then mm. you're in Australia, and you're a movie person now. That's a pretty big part, right? Yeah, I mean, I was I was so young though; I was really little. But I went to this school called the Australian Theatre for Young People, or ATYP, and mm-hmm. it's, um, I'm now the ambassador for, which is a great um, uh, youth theatre school, really, that you go to after school and and do your class. They, you know, take from eight years old to twenty five years old right, people. Right, right. Um, so I did that, and then I graduated uh, high, you know, I finished high school, and I auditioned for NIDA, which is the big drama school that you know Mel Gibson went to and Kate, but I didn't get in, so I was devastated. Um, and then I went to university. What did you um, study there? I did English literature. What do you mean you didn't get into that to, to the school? No. How the in. fuck did that happen? I don't know. Man. What do you mean, man? I didn't get in, man. <laughs> so how many, how many, you did a movie and did some TV already? <laughs> yeah. So I did, you had I did, that? I did a bit of movies. I did and that. And you're, you're in Australia? Yeah. And they wouldn't let you in? You, what did you do? Like, you, what did you do during I was your... pretty sad. I was, so I went to well, university. What did you do during your audition? Oh, what did I, well, what didn't I? I think it's probably what I didn't do. <laughs> well, I'm sure I wasn't very good. I don't know. But yeah. you already, you were working. I don't think it mattered. Clearly didn't matter. <laughs> what a pompous bunch of. <laughs> no. no. Yeah. Well, I, but I, now I, you know, I went to, I went to college instead. But now yeah. you're the ambassador for that school? No, no, no. That's a separate school. Oh. NIDA is one school. ATYP is another school. So you, yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah. you went to basically a performance high school and then you tried to get into what would, uh, like, would be a, a college arts program. Exactly. Basically. Yeah. It's like Juilliard. Right. Okay. Yeah, and it's yeah, the, uh, Australian yeah. Juilliard. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, and they yeah. Did, you know, I fuck them. And man. They- <laughs> what kind of bullshit is that? Right. Well, you should. Why? Well, I hope they right? know what's going I on with you now. I hope they do too. <laughs> I right. hope. I hope they're listening. Yeah, I, yeah, I do too. Teachers are oh, I'll listening. Get, I'll get one email. <laughs> like I'd like to say that I did go to that school. And what did you have to do? Like a classical piece terrible. and a modern piece, like two I have pieces. To do. Um, yeah, I did. Right. I think I did something from Twelfth Night. If mm-hmm. I remember, I think I did a viola from Twelfth Night. Mm-hmm. God, I've, bl- I've, blo- I've blocked it out. I've Probably a heavy out. something heavy. Hopefully, it was something <laughs> heavy to show. <laughs> Cried a little bit to balance off the sh- the Shakespeare and comedy. I don't know how yeah. to do Shakespeare. No, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know how to read it. I don't even. I don't know. I, I only really, you know, Hamlet. I studied and I love. And I actually studied Twelfth Night and The Tempest. At school. I loved English, so I loved. So you studied yeah. the, as literature, mm, but yeah. to act them. Yeah, geez, so what, that's, yeah that's a that's a chore. It, <laughs> The language is amazing. Like that's the, what I hear. You know hear. what I mean? They're yeah, like, he's really the greatest writer. We're, we're, ever, you know, he's we're making news he's here. Just <laughs> Rose, Rose Byrne has decided that Shakespeare is a pretty good writer. Right here on my show, guys. Bill Shakespeare. <laughs> Have you heard of him? Awesome writer. Bill Shakespeare got a handle on the language. That fella can write. <laughs> can write well. All right, so you go to the university. Yeah, so I went to Sydney University. And you studied what? I studied gender studies. And I studied English literature. So you were bailing. <laughs> I was basically giving up. You were. No, no, no. You mean on acting? Yeah. No, no. So at the same time, I would audition. I did, I, and I did films and TV at the same time. So yeah. Uh, yeah. do we know any of the people that you acted with? Some people that became bigger stars from the Australian talent landscape. Yeah. I'm sure, well, I did a film when I was nineteen with Heath Ledger. Oh yeah. yeah. How old? How old was he? Yeah. Couldn't be much older than you. He was you. nineteen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we were both kids. Which movie? Yeah. Which movie? It's a really great crime caper film called Two Hands. Uh, it wasn't released here, but it was a big hit in Australia with Brian Brown, mm. and a host of brilliant Australian actors directed and written by Gregor Jordan. And yeah, Heath was the lead, and I played his kind of love interest in the film. And was yeah. he great? Yeah, he was great. Heath, he's, he was incredibly generous. Uh-huh. He would just help you whenever he could. Like when I would come to LA, you know, his house was open to stay and he would always help me get auditions and oh yeah very... so you guys remained friends we did we mm. did yeah so it was very obviously you know a real, Sad. real tragedy yeah. yeah just a real tragedy you know his poor family his little girl and everything but he um he was a very wild and spirited and kind of you know 
guy. He was yeah. very. He lived well, like he lived large Pushed and yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He was. He wasn't. A, he was shy in a way, though. Heath, like I suppose, but um, but he was always very generous. Had a big heart. Ah, uh, mm. well, yeah, it was a horrible loss, and it just yeah. seemed like right when he was really about to. So to I take know he's yeah. done some incredible performances. Oh yeah, a couple, and, yeah, right? and then he won the, yeah. the award posthumously. Like, yeah, very, really, very sad. Wow. So that was early on. Now you were in Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones. Oh yeah, I did that. That I still get fan mail for. Of course you do. If people are crazy. Of course you do. Talk about what it. kind of fan? How big was your part in that? Because I, I'm not that big a nerd, so I wouldn't. I did not see the movie. I tell you, I am in that film for a minute. And a half, and you get and I'm behind Natalie Portman the whole time, and you get and I have one line, yeah, like 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 yeah. just like cards and laminated things and posters oh and just God. you know it's all from intense. the same guy, the one guy, exactly all from the same person who's got the shop where he's selling them, <laughs> and the one dude, yeah, yeah. And how do you respond to that kind of thing? I mean, I you I, don't. I, uh, no, I did last time. I actually did write, did a bunch of fan mail, which was cool. Mm-hmm. I hadn't, I'd finally got around to doing a bunch of stuff because I was doing a play and they sent it to the theater in, on Broadway. What so play? Actually, I did a play called You Can't Take It With You. Oh, that classic play? Yeah, the Kaufman and Hart play. I feel like I was in that play in you, college. You were, I'm sure you were. Everybody was. It's Everybody a, it's a big, there's a lot of people on stage yeah, yeah, at the end. Yeah, yeah, it's a big cast. Big cast of people. So, is that the one where so the, one of the relatives blows things up? Yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> the pinner. Yep. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, there you go. Sure. Um, so I, I did that on Broadway Did you last love year. it? Did I you love it? I loved it. I loved it. James L. Jones played wow. grand, grandpa, grandfather. Do you feel like, uh, do you love stage acting? I, I hadn't done a play since I'm, tw- for 12 years, since I was like 20. Is that something? One or something. Like, uh, well, let's 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 catch up. So, uh, the Star Wars thing. How'd you get that? Yeah. That was shot that there, was right? Shot there. I just auditioned, and you were yeah. still living there. Yep, I was still living there. So he was there. casting locally. Yep, exactly. I'm sure they had, like some kind of <laughs> prerequisite for tax purposes to right. cast Australians. But let's yeah, see. in any case, I got to do, which was really cool. You, but did you get to engage with George Lucas? Yeah, he was cool. He was really friendly and really cool. Lovely. All right. Yeah. And when do you make the move to the States? When do you're like, I'm going to... F- wait, yeah. wait a minute. I did, there, I read something like, where is this? That there was a, another movie where you worked with Dennis Hopper. I did. I did a film called The Night We Called It A Day. Dennis Hopper came out to do it. He played Frank Sinatra and uh, Melanie uh, Griffith came out. And that well. was an Australian movie? Yeah. Just was it little Angel Edgerton and other... Was it hidden Edgerton. from the rest of the world? Because I've never seen it. I don't think it came out here. <laughs> I did a few movies that didn't, Dennis didn't see much so many audiences. <laughs> Frank Sinatra? Yeah. Bizarre. Yeah, yeah, it was bizarre. It was bizarre. Did you hang out with yeah. him? No, we didn't like hang out. No. Too I just scary? remember was everybody too, was like, was I was intimidated. I was yeah. young. I was 20, How old were you? 20. Ooh. I was a kid, yeah. 21. You know, yeah. I was really uh, intimidated at that point. So, so when do you make the move? I may, I started like coming over here when I was auditioning, you know, in my like 1920, but just come over for three months here, three months there, and audition, audition, and then I eventually got this job called Wicker Park. So um, I did that, and then I did this film Troy, which is like a big sandals and sword oh, epic yeah. with Brad Pitt and Orlando Bloom and Wolfgang Peterson directed. How big it, was your part in that? It was cool. It was a good part. I played Briseis, um, who uh, is a you know is a Greek and gets captured by the Trojans, and um, she's you know, becomes basically Brad Pitt's, like, slave. You know? Nice. So you got to work with and Brad. And fall in love and get together. Yeah. They fell in love with Brad. The characters do, you know, they get together. I understand. <laughs> that was a moron. Yeah. Just clarifying. Yeah. Just clarifying. So you don't like Brad Pitt is what you're saying. I hated him. Yeah. I just <laughs> hated him. I mean, what a <laughs> No, no, he was cool, man. He was... He was cool. I was young. I was pretty shy. Um, and we filmed that in Malta uh-huh. for a long time. So you're on set for time. a long time. Waiting in the hotel was for a pretty, long time. Was it pretty, though? Pretty, right? Malta's pretty. Mm-hmm. It's gorgeous. Yeah, so there was, it was all on kind of location-ish, you know, big pretty sets. Pretty much, yeah. And- Malta's got all these incredible ruins and things. That I mean, it's a very popular place to film. Was he know? nice to work with? I mean, when you say when you talk about Heath Ledger as being generous or being... Yeah. was what, what kind of actor is Brad Pitt to play Brad's against? Brad's really mellow. Like, oh, he's really? laid back and he's... Easy, you know, yeah. and uh, he's creative in a really particular way. Like he's very curious, and um, he had a lot of ideas about things. And he was, and just 
cool with that. Like respected actors. I was really into it's, it. It's know. interesting that you can't like it, there's certain things in terms of movie stars that you can't really account for that. Mm-hmm. Like there's no you know, they're just born that way. Mm-hmm. You know, I, who the hell knows? Yeah. You know, whatever he's doing, yeah. you know, when he gets on screen, yeah. you're like, no, that's Brad Pitt. Yeah. There's only a handful of movie stars. Yeah, I know. <laughs> there are, right? There's a lot yeah. of actors. Yeah, and there's only a handful that have that kind of it's, transcend to that. It's kind of, of bizarre because it's complete. Yeah. It's like models, you know, so yeah. it's just this natural phenomenon yeah. if they can find it. Yeah, it's really true. No, I know. And he, uh, you know, yeah, I was just working with um, Susan Sarandon. I'm doing a sh- film shooting out here with her. Really? Yeah, and she's, you know, th- has she been here? No. I've interviewed her when I did a radio show uh, on Air America. I interviewed the well, when they were together, the both of them. Oh, cool. She knows yeah. me. Oh, cool. You can say hi. I will. Uh, she's, you know. I'd like to get her in here. She's dynamite. She's great. She's great. She's just brilliant. Marie Antoinette, you were in that. I saw that movie. Yeah, I have a really fun little part in that, uh, playing um, the Duchess de Polignac. Did you have fun dressing up? It was fun. I got to wear some costumes that uh, mm. Marissa Berenson wore in Barry Lyndon. They, you did? Yeah, because Milena Cananero was the costume designer who's won, you know, and she multiple just pulled them Oscars. Out? And I she still some. had them? Yeah, I guess she still had them in the files or, you know, in the archives. That's crazy. Yeah, these gourd, you know, gourd. That's an insane movie. Yeah, Barry amazing Linden. movie, yeah. It's really, like, yeah. it's, it's it's funny in parts. Yeah. Even. yeah. Um, so, Sophia Coppola was fun? Yeah, it was Sophia. She was cool. She was very um Wait, gentle that? director, oh. very, like... Easy, gentle, a lot of improvising, very like, you know, kind yeah. of fluid filmmaking. It was cool. Yeah, it was fun. And Jamie Dornan was in that. Jamie. Jamie Dornan, who is now the star of Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, good. He was. He was in that. Thank God. <laughs> he's a lovely guy. He's a. He's a. How that a is that Fifty Shades? Did that open? Did it come and go? Is it done? Is it? That happened? was a huge hit. It was. Yeah. Big hit. How could it not be? How how exactly? How I, could it I not guess be? there's a lot of women in this country that don't realize that porn is available. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I, or Anais Nin. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> go way back. Go all the way back. Do whatever you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I'm being condescending, and I'd have no idea what the book is about, nor do I know what the movie was about. Right? Did you see you've it? Missed, you've missed. Uh, well, I you know I was traveling back from Australia once, and the woman, both women on either side of me, were reading the book, and the stewardess, and the women in front. But of is me it were romance or is it filth? So I did read it. Oh, you did. Yeah, I read it, and um, it's. It, a hybrid? Is it romantic film? It's a filth? hybrid. It's a hybrid. <laughs> romantic film. I would film. say it's a hybrid. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. So it's almost, so, so it's not quite porn. It's just above porn for some reason. I not that I have so. any problem. I have no problem with porn. I'm yeah. not judging it. I guess I'm not that up on my porn, so I can't really compare Well, it's not. It. Is it? Is it romantic? Or is it just sexual? No, you know, no, no. It's romantic. It's mm. absolutely romantic. Yeah. It's a classic story of, you know, okay. dare, dark, daring suitor and the young virginal woman. And mm. blah, blah, blah. So I, I'll get you a copy. Sounds good to me. I'll send you I'll a copy. I'll pick one up. I'll get you a Kindle. Yeah. Will you? <laughs> I have a Kindle. We'll just download it after this. I'll give you some music. You can give me the Fifty Shades of Grey. You can help me download that. But, so you've done a shitload of movies. The X-Men movies are big. You must get some fan mail for that. I do, yeah. Same guy from the Star Wars. Exactly, the fanboys. Yeah, they're the fanboys. The nerds. The nerds. They love you? Are you a nerd goddess? They they give... I think because I'm not a mutant in those X-Men films, (laughs) I've really escaped a lot of attention. You fly... uh, You're the... What what is your part? What's her name? Moira? Moira McTaggart. She's a CIA agent, operative. And so she has this relationship with Charles Xavier. Uh Um, And so... She flies planes, and she actually causes his injury in the one that, you know, he made, she made oh, really? the, um, paraplegic in the one that... Oh, really? Yeah. And that's right out of the comic, or what? Uh, or are I they all different? I believe so. I'm not sure. We had an incredible guy come in on set one day with, like, the, all the comics, you know, a real fanboy, and he was showing me all of Moira's history and blah, blah, blah. And they're kind of endless. They just I mean, let that guy stories. on the set? Who was, what do you mean yeah. he just came on the set? No, no. I mean, you know, they sourced him out, the production, and he came on, and any question we had about these characters... They found a guy whose job was it to be a deep nerd, a deep X-Man nerd. Yeah. And they're like, we've got the deepest X-Man nerd yep. in the country. Yep. He's coming in with the stuff. Yep. He He's came a, in. And he came in? He came in. Was he, uh, he came in. on he was, top of his game? 
He was beyond on top of his... I mean, uh-huh. he had... Because the thing is with those comics, the stories are crazy. I mean, yeah. they go into, like, parallel universes and then they change identities and then yeah. they come back and then they die and then they're reborn and then yeah, they're yeah. a man and a woman and then they have powers and then they don't and then yeah. they have a child and the child turns into the sun and then the sun <laughs> rules this planet, the planet of that yeah. planet, they blow up and then, the you know, the yeah. Trojans from that planet turn into apes that yeah. then become, you know, it's yeah. like Scientology. <laughs> it's like totally... I don't know, but I think I'll send that little clip of you saying that to you and you can pr- maybe publish chat <laughs> maybe you could give that to a, a, a comic book writer and say i think i came up with this spontaneously on marin's show i was See riffing we yeah i was riffing. what do you think we've got a full mythology here i'm not i mean it's really that complicated like i, I, I know. was like what so I, I think they just pick out strands of stuff from these universes of these stories and and figure out figure which ones out, are, yeah. mash it up into a movie yeah, yeah I, I never got into them those comic books later in life i got into some of the more which ones Hellblazer, Sandman, mm-hmm. Swamp Thing I liked, yeah. but I was never a superhero person. Do you like any I, of the films, any of the kind of franchises that are around? I haven't uh, really jumped in. You know, I, I think I saw Iron Man. I think I saw that. I think I saw Iron Man 1 and 2 for some reason, and I saw, uh, yeah, and I, I liked it. You know, it's okay. It's fun. Did you like the Christopher Nolan trilogy, the Dark Knight? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw yeah. those. Yeah, I yeah. like those. Yeah, mm-hmm. I... Some of them are, are better than others, you know. I, I, I it was interesting because I, um, yeah, I saw, I was watching, I don't know if it was the last one, and it reminded me that I met Michael Keaton and I had to have him on the show. I wanted to have him on the show, and because uh, I was watching one of Nolan's, I was like, I gotta. I hadn't reached out to Michael Keaton in like a year. Wow, did he come on? He did. Oh, cool. But it was like you know, like the next day or something. He's like, oh, I'm in town now. Oh, cool. What are you doing now? <laughs> What's going on tomorrow? You gonna be around tomorrow? He just came over like at seven at night. All right, what are we doing? So that's good. It was great. Keep you on your toes. It was great yeah, to talk to the yeah. uh, the first Batman. The original. He was a good Batman. That was a great film. I yeah. loved that original one. Yeah, so yeah, did he. Kim Basinger and yeah, Jack Nicholson. Yeah, Nicholson. but the 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 Christopher Nolan series is I think so really deep, brilliant yeah. and sort of good. you know raised the bar for the so genre. and then you were on Damages Forever. And that was a big job, right? That was Huge like the job. biggest job you had. Big break. People loved yep. that thing. And it was sort of Thank like, you. it was one of those weird TV shows where it's sort of like, canceled. No, it's not. That's back. <laughs> it's, it's half canceled. No, we're just moving it to a thing. We're just moving it to an obscure <laughs> network, but we're still going. We're still on it. We're still here. We're still here. Yeah. Yeah. We we had five seasons, three on FX, two on direct TV. Uh, but yeah, it was a big break for me. I was 27, moved to New York, got this show opposite Glenn Close. Yeah. And um, I'd never done cable television before and like a long running show not since I'm 15 I did a show in Australia for you know a soap for about a year so it's hard work I mean the hours that those act that you clock as an actor on those shows is like intense you work 17 18 hour days it's really the crew but you got to work with uh but I got to work with Glenn. Yeah. She's, you know, she's Glenn Close. She's and that, what was the whole, it was sort of a sordid bit of business. What was the yeah. angle of that show? Yeah, uh, I'm a young, very naive lawyer who comes to work for her and she's only in, employing me because I have information and she's a very duplicitous sort of shady woman in a way. She does a lot of things out of line, out of off uh-huh. book to get her case done. But she's generally, usually is trying to do the right thing, but she does a lot of bad things to do the right thing. Are your folks still alive? Mm-hmm. Are they proud of you? Yeah. I think so. <laughs> I hope so. Do they go see your stuff? <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. Oh, yeah. They try to. Yeah. Because they're in Tasmania. It's pretty remote. They don't Is there a horse track in Tasmania? No, he doesn't really go to the track anymore. He just listens on the radio. Betfair.com. Oh, so he yeah, does it online. Betfair.com. Yep. So he just sits there and does that. Yes. <laughs> compulsively. And he has garlic farm. He's a garlic farm. Yeah, he has a beautiful. I'll show you a photo. He's got great garlics. He's um, entered a few competitions. There's a national. There's an annual competition in t- in Tasmania. For He's a garlic. competitive garlic grower. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Does he ever send you garlic? Yeah. No, he doesn't. Because hmm. I'm in, over here. So <laughs> you can't send. I don't garlic? think I'm gonna get through customs. Yeah. But when you do, you go visit them. Yeah, them? I was just there over the summer, and they have they're really good with food, and everything's very fresh, and so they he cooks for me constantly when I'm there with garlic. A lot of garlic. A lot of garlic. No vampires in that house. Uh, does he pickle it or anything like that? Uh, no. Maybe he does. He hasn't told me. I don't think so. I don't uh, think I've only so. had that once anyways. It's kind of heavy. Was it nice? It's all right. Yeah. It's like eating a whole clove of garlic. Just because it's sitting in vinegar doesn't mean it's going to be any less. Give you a little, me knock a little you out. stomach ache if I eat too much garlic. Yeah, yeah. And you think it's good for you and maybe it's good for it you. It is. But it is. Is it? Yes. <laughs> I, I mean, is there science on that? Yeah. or? It's got a lot of antioxidants in it. Fine. <laughs> 
Don't so, quote me on that. So, all right, let's get into the, 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 the more recent stuff. Yeah, in that. cool. How'd you get locked in with these comic people? I was very lucky. I kept badgering my agent saying I'd love to do comedy and all I really was known for is Damages and Troy, which were kind of very heavy films and te- television show. So I finally started getting some auditions and then I went in and read for Get Him to the Greek that Judd Apatow was producing and Nick Stoller was the writer-director. Oh, he's been in here. Has he been in here? <laughs> yeah. He's awesome, right? So he's he a gave sweet me guy. my break. He's a sweet guy. He gave me my break and they knew Damages a little bit, so... That was sort of his break too. What the... He did for getting Sarah Marshall. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, But they took a chance, you know. Mm -hmm. Damages wasn't a comedy, and that's where they knew me from. And they were like, "Sure." So him and Judd were sitting there, and they decided that Judd wasn't in the room. That I think it was just it was it was Nick Stoller, and I've sort of blurted out. It's online. My audition. It is. Yeah. How'd that happen? They film it and they post. I mean, Russell's is online. Mine's online. They post it during the promotion. Russell's is online. Maybe they do. I don't know what the you know why how they, they roll it out right. but like huh. so and so that was the first real comedy that was my break the yeah. big comedy yep and then you did bridesmaids break. after that yeah and that you know they had seen me in that judd and he was producing this and i read for that and they and i got bridesmaids so i was really very lucky to be you know right and then you did neighbors them. which was pretty huge yeah yeah we did neighbors the internship was which was not so huge <laughs> Though there were a lot of signs around That's that remained right. around. The ghosts. And you did The Place Beyond the Pines, which was heavy as fuck. Yeah. I love that fucking movie. It's a cool movie. I have a tiny part, but it was really cool. I played Bradley's wife. and Yeah, it's brief, right? Yeah, super brief. I have like three scenes. but Derek When he was really... a cop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not when he became like mayor or whatever we still no he's so it's sort of yeah it's the second half of the film and he's a cop and then he gets shot right injured and then he does and then he starts running for mayor right yeah. so you yeah. you were there like when he was home exactly. convalescing exactly. right exactly i remember yep. yeah yeah now i thought yeah. that movie was very kind of uh, uh did you like it i did like mm. it it was pretty to look at mm. it's like and it was an interesting structure yeah, he's yeah. a really interesting filmmaker. I loved Blue Valentine, uh-huh. and he's just done another really interesting film. Called, What's his name? Um, Derek Sanford. Frank. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. He's like a real artist guy. Yeah, he's really yeah. He's he's um, really talented. So the the spy thing is going to happen. Yeah, so spy comes out in June. X Men Apocalypse is going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know they I'm on I went to your wiki and they have not put adult beginners on there. Haven't they? No. How do I get in touch with them? I don't know who does it. Maybe I mean talk to your publicist. My name was incorrect on IMDb for a long time. They had my name as Rose Judith Esther Byrne. What? I know. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> but what's your dream, man? What do you want to like? What What would be the role of what? I mean, what? You do know, you, I would just love strive to work with directors I admire. And I who do you love, want to work with? I mean, I'd love to work with Derek again. He, that was really, um, you know, inspiring, challenging experience. Um, I love um, David Lynch. I'm a big Lynch fan. I love. love can you get films. weird? How weird can you get? Uh, well, I would. You know, you do it for him, right? I'd love to do that. I think he's he's so. So you like heavy one. shit? You do like it? Well, but I've I've it's been great doing some f- sure, comedy because sure. that's been something I've. But to challenge yourself. Oh yeah, for sure, absolutely. And do you feel like you've nailed it or what? Nailed like, the being challenge? An actress? Oh, no, you are you kidding? Not at all. Not at all. No. Are you worried? Always. <laughs> yeah? But you're doing okay, right? I have nothing to complain about. But I think the, you know, general sort of artists. Sure. Oh, what's your biggest fear, on, though, really? On we, I think yeah. it just sure. drives you a little bit. Sure, you're just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Well, yeah. you know, you've d- you're doing, you know, like you found, you know, you've hit your stride at an age where, you know, most actresses are like, am I going to work anymore? It's true. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. true. No, it's a good point. It's absolutely true. No, I've had a great few last years of working consistently on interesting stuff. But, uh, you know, fuck, man. Yeah. Like, can you swear on this show? Sure. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, but. Uh, well, now you got to do it. You know. What were you going to say? Fuck, Well, man? I was just going to say fuck, man. Yeah, good. You know, like, it's. Yeah. You just have to keep perspective on it, you know. I think you want to do more stage. That's mm-hmm. what I think. <laughs> Is that what you see when you look into my eyes? I think I like, like some heavy stage. No, I think my st- I'm probably more strong in comedic Movies? stuff, I think. 
Really? Yeah, I think so. I think I've found, even though I think it's more challenging. What if you're like, but... well, don't you want to be like a play an evil fucking? Well, in Spy, I have a really great evil character. Because like even in Bridesmaids, that was she was just insecure and, and over the top in terms of her pomposity. Yeah. But it was a fragile character. Yeah. But I'd absolutely. like to see you be terrifying. Yeah, in Spy, she's like that. This is she's. It's a comedy, she truly though. Truly no? doesn't. It's a comedy. It is a comedy. No, it's a comedy, but it's taken very seriously for a comedy. So it's like my character is, she's just absolutely just doesn't care about anybody else but herself, and there's no no sort of concept of a consequence for her. Mm. You know, it's very. Uh, she's totally. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. that was fun. That was fun to play a truly evil person. And Feig's great. He's a sweet guy. He's the greatest. Yeah. The and he's. I mean, not to get. He's. What? He's such a champion of women, you know, like he breaks every convention, like he's so smart like that. And I, when I went and met him at FICO recently, he's like, you know, we want to make female driven films with action and comedy. And that's sort of, he's doing exactly what he said. Well, I think it's important. It has to happen. It has to happen. What it do you, has to happen. You studied gender in college. What, did, what was, that must yeah. have been like at the beginning of the massive gender studies. What, what was the angle on that? We, we read Foucault sure. and we, you know looked at that stuff and the myth of gender like gender sort of technically being a myth uh -huh. like the and how it developed and patriarchy to read about the patriarchy like yeah. the how the whole thing is stilted against right oh women. sure yeah, yeah 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 totally i've been reading the feminine mystique by betty friedan i know which is a very old text but oh yeah i've been reading that which is you know really interesting and, yeah um so yeah and it, it's just still really rife so it's Someone like Paul Fee, who it's is great. just interested in just like smashing all those walls and well, not thought, paying attention to it, is really. I thought refreshing. Bridesmaids was genius. I thank loved you. it. Thank you. Thank you. You were great. Everybody was great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's a. I was again. Hilarious. Weirdly, didn't realize. I'm very naive. I didn't realize like that it would be such a, you know, disgust point of the fact that it was all women being funny. I really didn't realize that when we started doing the press tour, that was everyone was like, wow, who knew all these women were so funny? Yeah, Americans forget that. It's amazing. But not just Americans. It was all over the world. We oh, went yeah. to England and Ireland and Australia. And, um, you know, I'm sure they didn't say that to the guys in The Hangover. Like, wow, you guys are funny. That's yeah, weird. Yeah, you guys are really you know, like, funny. Like, who knew that guys, little short guys with beards <laughs> and doofuses who put uh, tattoos on their face were yeah, hilarious. Yeah, it's like... I'm sure they didn't say that to to them. So it'd be great the day that we don't have to say it at all. Like that's just I, I, you you, you, know. you say it, sister. I will. <laughs> I will, brother. I will. I will. All right, I got to get you out of here. I guess to to honor your uh, your other commitments. Oh no, I'm sorry. Where do you got to go? Oh, it's very dull. But I have a I have a commitment this evening that my friend's coming over at like six thirty, and we're going out together. Oh yeah, for yeah, dinner to a dinner. Fancy yeah. to someone's house. To like a dinner in a um, in a where is it? It's in like Barney's. Oh yeah, the restaurant. <laughs> yes. oh, so it's an event. Yes. You're going to an event. Don't make me feel guilty about it. And you're gonna get all dolled up. No, this is it. No, come on. This is it. You're well, lying. I'll put on like a out different outfit. A dress. Yeah. You can wear a dress. Yeah, maybe a frock. No, you can wear a black dress. A is black what you're, you're wearing, frock. You can wear a black dress. <laughs> I know it's happening. Are you going to an event tonight? Where are you going? I'm going to go play guitar at a place. Oh, really? Yeah. Where? At the Baked Potato. Cool. Well, it's nice talking to you. Yeah, lovely to talk to you. And uh, best of Sorry, uh, luck you. with this movie. Thank you. Thank you for and watching And all your it. success. And all your success to you as well. I yeah. hope I get my come, 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 can come back again. No, there's no way. No, <laughs> no, no one. First of all, I never do. Uh, I never have people come back unless I really like them. Really? And they help them promote something. And, you know, generally people who have to go to, you know, leave early, can't schedule properly. Whoa. To, yeah, that's how I am. Whoa. Yeah. So you just, just know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you can come back anytime. Oh. Even if I'm not here, feel free. Just Thank you. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say goodbye, Rose. All right. Well, that's it. Uh, that was a lovely chat. She's lovely to look at and talk to, that woman. And talented as well. So I'm, uh, I'm in a hotel room. Just going to hang out. Go to WTFPod.com for all your WTF Pod needs. Get on that mailing list. I'll mail you a little something every Monday. Uh, what else? You know, get some JustCoffee.coop. I went there. Did I tell, the, tell you that? I went over to JustCoffee.coop, saw their new operation. It's in it's in a uh, a building that used to be a roller rink, 
big operation. They got both machines going. They used to just have the con- the convection uh, roaster, but now they got the drum roaster as well. So their darks, their uh, dark coffees are probably resonating much better, and uh, which is fortunate because because they're doing that in the drum. I think now, and my coffee is a dark coffee, so this is the way it's supposed to be done. They're full, got full spectrum over there now. Big operations. Nice to meet everybody over at JustCoffee.coop. Uh, you know, I knew Moon and a couple other people. That Mike Moon, who runs the joint, well, it's a co-op, so I don't want to lay any sort of uh, heavy leadership qualities on any of the members. But it was uh, it's great to be over there. Great to drink coffee at the source. Nice to do something in Madison. Go to wtfpod.com slash calendar and check out the dates. Because I, I honestly, if I'm coming near you, you should come near me. Because. Uh,